everybody, welcome back. So as a quick recap from last time, we introduced this concept of the K-armed bandit, which uh, essentially had these K levers of a slot machine. In our example, we had A, B, and C, which are three levers. So we set K equal to three. Now what happened was we, every time we pulled one of these levers, we would get some value from the corresponding distribution so if we pulled lever A, we'd get a value from A's distribution, which means it could be random. So we get negative 2, we could get 4, we could get 5. And if we uh, pulled from B, then we'd have a different uh, distribution that we're pulling from. And so we're likely going to get uh, a very different set of values. We could get these ones. And for C, we could get these ones. And so we don't actually care too much about the underlying distributions. We actually really only care about the averages. Okay, so if we can compute an average for each of the levers, then we know which one on average is best. And well, that one, that's the one we're going to take. So assuming our same algorithm from last time, which was basically just like try each lever a thousand times and then get some average that we think is uh, pretty close, then we're just going to take the best one from there on. So we're going to keep that technique for now. We're, we're going to drop it eventually in later videos. But right now we're going to keep that and fix a problem inherently in that, which is the way we're actually computing an average. And if you look at this one, this is exactly how we're computing the average. So the second time, this is after two rewards, we summed up two rewards, because that's what we had, and we divide by two, and that's how everyone would do an average. Except in this lecture, I'm actually going to show you, you don't have to do that. There's a much, much better way, and I'm going to derive it for you. If I denote Rn as the average of R1 plus R2 plus dot 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 plus up to Rn. So basically we're saying we've received n rewards so far, and this would be for a certain lever. So say if we were trying to estimate the average for A, if we've taken a say n times we would uh, we would add up all of these different reward values for that lever that we received and we would divide by the number of times that we got a we that we pulled the lever or the number of re rewards we've received okay and this is the average formula that 99% uh, of people would think of when they see this but i'm going to show you a much better way to compute an average since we're constantly computing averages with just you know one more step every time and we can do this by basically writing the average in terms of the previous average that we had already calculated because remember we're we're getting a reward we're calculating the average we're getting another reward we're calculating the average and every time we're summing up all those values that we've already received so basically we're storing all of those rewards in memory and then we're running a, a linear computation on all of them. And we don't have to. We can actually derive an awesome formula which is just going to state that we only need to know our past average, so that's one value, and the new reward that we received. So we only need two values and it's just a, if you're familiar with um, a computation expense, it's in big O of 1 or theta of 1, which just means it's constant time. It's very, very fast to run. So in a couple of minutes, I'm just going to derive this for you. And it's really, really easy math. Uh, if, if you look at it step of the, each step of the way, it should be pretty easy to follow. So if I denote Rn as the average of, uh, after receiving n rewards, then I would write it as conventionally the sum of all those rewards divided by n. Okay. I can do some uh, common tricks that are used in statistics and some math courses where I can write this as R1 plus 2 Rn minus 1, so all but the last one plus the last one, still all divided by n, so I haven't changed anything. And I'll now choose to write this in a summation format where if I take uh, basically group these terms that's why I wrote it like that, so I could group these terms. Then I can do a summation. It goes from 1 to n minus 1 of the ri's, so it's just summing those terms, plus rn again, that's going to stay, divided by n. 
Okay. And just to, for the purpose of how this looks, I'm going to write it as 1 over n times the summation. Okay, that's exactly the same thing, just, uh, just looks a little bit cleaner for what I'm about to do. And now what we can do is actually keep this outside the same, but we can multiply and divide this term by n minus 1. And you'll see why we want to do that shortly. It's just a really clever technique. If we multiply and divide by n minus 1, of course you're allowed to do that because you're truthfully just multiplying by 1, which doesn't change anything. It's just written differently. And we're not going to do anything to this term. So we just multiplied this term by 1, or n minus 1, divided by n minus 1. And then what we'll see here is we actually get this, n minus 1 times this term. I'm just going to format it in a slightly different uh, visual way, but it's the same words, it's same, the same writing. Okay, that's exactly the same thing as before. And if you look at this thing, if you look at this closely, what actually is this? This is just an average, and specifically, it's actually the previous average that we had. Because this is the, we're trying to compute the average over n rewards. And this here is just the average over the previous n minus 1 rewards. So including all of what we just, all of what we had up until now. So this is amazing. And I'm going to write it in its notation that you would use for an average or the, the same notation we're using for the current average we're producing. This is Rn minus 1 bar, which just means the average over the n minus 1 rewards. And then still we have Rn, that's fine. Okay, now what we can do is actually uh, carry this, uh, we can basically expand this term. And we get n Rn minus 1 bar minus Rn minus 1 bar plus Rn. Okay, we can expand this 1 over n and we'll get, well, for this term, it's going to cancel out, so we'll actually get rn minus 1 bar all by itself, and then we'll get a minus rn minus 1 bar over n, plus an rn over n. Okay, so I just expanded the 1 over n. And now, if I basically just factor that out, I end up with this, and I'm also going to swap the order of these next two terms. So we have 1 over n times rn minus rn minus 1 bar. All right, and this should make us super, super happy. And that's because these are all things that we can, well, choose to keep track of. We have three different things here. We have the previous average, so we, we would have already had to calculate this because when we were curious about the average over, say, four rewards, well, we had to sum over the four rewards and divide by four. Except now, say that we're looking for the average of five things, so we already had an average of four things, and we got a fifth thing added to that collection. Well, the average of those fifth, five things is just the average over the four things, which is this, plus one over five times that new reward. Obviously, we would need the, the new value that we got. And take away that same thing, that previous average. Okay, it's just the old average plus one over the, the total number of things now times our new reward minus our previous average. That is amazing. It takes it, no time at all to calculate, and it takes very little memory to store these things. It's great on both fronts. So we're going to box this formula and uh, write it again. The new average, which is just defined conventionally as the sum over all of the rewards divided by the number of things 
is equal to Rn minus 1 bar, aka the previous average, plus 1 over the new number of things, so the previous number of things, plus 1, times our new reward minus our previous average. That is not an approximation. That is, ex these things are exactly equal. And so if we already have Rn minus 1 bar, if we keep track of n, and then we look at our new reward, then that's all we have to do. And it's going to save memory and time. So that was really just the goal of today's lecture is to derive this awesome formula. Hopefully it makes sense. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.